Hey, what's up, friends? This week on the podcast, I've got the distinct honor of having Steve Kuklo on the show, Dallas bodybuilding legend from Detroit, Michigan, but he's a Cowboys fan. We're going to talk a little bit about that, about bodybuilding, about entrepreneurship, about embracing and overcoming adversity, about health and wellness. A few tips in there for us, uh, those of us who uh, want to stay fit but uh, don't have quite the investment he does. I hope you enjoy the show. I think you will. business if you ate there every day <laughs> yeah i put me i'd be living on the streets but i'd be broke too yeah yeah you would <laughs> i mean that's a definitely a date night place i mean right. that's a we're talking about the knife restaurant boy we're shops at willow bend play now yeah yeah that's yeah. a good spot man thanks for coming on man are we on yeah we're right. on it was good to meet you at um at that event about mm-hmm. a month ago yeah. there were a bunch of people there yeah, very cool. I, yeah. I always enjoy going to those events. I think you you learn a lot. You meet a lot of people. I think just even from a social aspect, it's really good. But, um, you know, I've been blessed to have some great alignments and friends in life that, that if I don't know anybody there, they bring me along and I get to see what that, you know, that side of the world's about coming from, say, fitness the majority of my life. Sure. So. How'd you get into fitness? Man, I, I, ball I was an athlete younger. growing up. So yeah. I, I started I started in, in, I really started hockey was my first sport I played because I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Gotcha. And um, go Lions? No, no, no. I'm a Cowboy fan. Okay. I've always been a Cowboy fan. Yeah. There's a you know a few things that kind of just just naturally merged into yeah. here when I moved like 15 years ago to Dallas. But uh, I started in hockey, and you know was was an athlete. My dad was an athlete, so I always pushed sports, and and I think that's a great thing, especially for for kids and growing up, learn a lot of disciplines. Um, and I loved. I've always was like one of the bigger kids. You know, wasn't. Uh, the biggest, but always was one of the bigger kids. And then we kind of got into football as I got in high school. And um, and I started weight training from there. And I just loved being like – getting trying to be the biggest, fastest, strongest yeah. guy on the field or whatever I did. Sure. So that was kind of my drive into weight training, um, more of a self – um, discipline more than anything. It wasn't like I was competing at the time to be a bodybuilder or powerlifter or anything, but it was like, how, how do I better my performance of what I'm doing? And from there, um, uh, really started kind of getting into the bodybuilding world more and more, like the disciplines. Like I loved, okay, what what does it take to not only just lift weights? What do I, I, I want to get bigger. I, I got to eat. I got to supplement, like all the things that ha- you have to do. And that kind of led me into um, – Going to a couple local bodybuilding shows and then picking up fitness magazines and that kind of this stuff. This is while you're in high school? Yeah, while yeah. I was in high school. So really the sports background is what led me into, uh, you know, the fitness world. And, uh, right on. You know, and that's really that hobby for me turned into a career. Yeah, it sure as hell did. So I think anytime you get to do that, it's really you are able to do something in life you love to do and it really doesn't feel like you work a day in your life. Sure. Like, sure, I mean, there's times it sucks and you got to sacrifice and it's hard, yeah. but... I mean, you kind of doing what you want to do versus what you're forced, something like you're forced you don't want to do. Um, sports is cool because, and I've been into sports since I can remember, if you're passionate about it, it's not hard to get hyped. It's right. not hard to watch what you eat. It's not hard to, to maybe show up a little earlier and stay a little later because mm-hmm. you want to smash heads on Saturdays. Absolutely. So you're going to do what you got to do. But the... Um, the discipline side of it, as you start to get older, was has that just always been in you? Just like, hey, I'm, I want to, I want to win, so I'm going to do whatever I got to do to do that. Yeah, I think a true athlete or competitor has that. Like, I really want to win that that uh, that drive in them. Um, it's, it's a lot of times you really can't teach that. I think it's something that's kind of innate in you. Um, and, and and a champion, I think, will. We'll kind of go and have that mindset. I'll do whatever it takes, you know, sacrifice my body, you know, like you said, stay later, train harder, whatever it is uh, to be the best. And and I, that to me carried over a lot in life, like whether it's into my businesses or, um, you know, just wanting to anything I do, I always felt like it's worth overdoing, you know, and, and if you're going to put in the time, like make it worth your time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's no there's no point in fucking around. Yeah. Or Absolutely. we may as well just stay in bed. Yeah. Because if you're going to get up and go through the motions, then, uh, again, it's just, it's it's like, it's a waste. Yeah. I like. Was that something, uh, 
Was your dad a hard driver? Where'd you get that from? I, I, part of it was my, was my dad. You know, I was kind of. I had a. My dad was very he, like he's super athletic growing up, quarterback. Uh, you know, the high school football team when he played, and he he was a pitcher as far as when he played baseball, and probably could have. He screwed up his shoulder and his arm at a, at a work incident, or else he probably could have you know made professional wow. uh, sports. And um, a lot of the guys I played with growing up too actually end up making an NHL and stuff like that. And and, nice. it, and I know I probably could have you know went professional in, in probably hockey, um, but I chose the path of bodybuilding, and I, I think yeah. it, it kind of chose me too. Um, you know, just the right things happen, the right doors open, um, and and everything just kind of aligned there. And I think you, when you follow the path, that sometimes it just when there's not you're not like forcing doors open. Things just work in your in your behalf, and I think us kind of sometimes that 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 mentality, that strong headed mentality, like man, I'm going to kick through this door and I'm going to force something, and then you get there and you're like, oh damn, that's not the right door. Yeah. So I've learned that. I mean, I've made mistakes along the way, but I think that definitely is um, something I've learned. Is you know, uh, when there's grace there, when you kind of be able to walk through a door, and then you can okay, like we can do this. Is that a faith thing for you? Uh, part, yeah, part part of it's faith, and, and part of it's knowing like. I think learning from mistakes too, and being willing to to get knocked down and get back up, and and not feel defeated. And um, I think a lot of that, an athlete will know, or a champion will know that because the champion didn't. You know, like a lot of people talk about overnight successes, and it's like you may see the success uh, overnight, but it took ten, fifteen, twenty years to get there. You know, absolutely. I mean. Uh... <laughs> A lot of people, you've seen that meme of the iceberg, right? And you only mm-hmm. see a little bit above, but what's right. below is immense and intense. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, the commitment that it takes to be a leader in your field mm-hmm. um, or at the top of your sport, is uh, it's incredible the amount of commitment that that takes. Yeah. A lot of it's discipline, I think, physical discipline, but I think there's a big mental aspect to it. I think sometimes is the harder of the two because – that mindset or that, that um, you know, when you start having doubts or you start having haters or, or negative things come against you, like you really have to have a strong mind to kind of block out that negative energy. Who hates on you? You're on like it. the nicest guy ever. <laughs> hey, man, the invention of social media and yeah. the phone, people are some keyboard warriors, man. You ain't lying. <laughs> it's not even beer muscles anymore. It's just straight like. It's Cheeto muscles. <laughs> it's Cheeto. That's right. Just sitting there on, in mom's basement with, uh, hey. yeah, with a fifty-gallon drum of those Cheeto round puff. That's things. right, talking shit and and doing what they, you know. So I can. Only they would never say idea. something to you in person, but they're, you know, they'll do it behind a phone and. No, you know, uh, uh, the threat of getting head butted right between the eyes isn't the good. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't say shit to my face either, and right, you you're know, big I old, wish you're they big would. Old dude, yeah, not too, many, uh, not too many smart people would. Let's tussle. <laughs> let's go talk this over. Yeah, o- outside where we won't break any china or whatever. Right, right. Um, that discipline thing is that something that you've continuously cu- cultivated and fostered in yourself in terms of. Uh, maybe you don't make New Year's resolutions, but maybe you go, man, I, I want to level up. I want to get to the next plateau. And to do that, to 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 realize a, a crazy big change, I got to make a crazy big change. Do yeah. you make like incremental improvements? I think I set goals and I'm disciplined toward my goals, um, but also create a balance. I think sometimes if you become too obsessed about one thing or too focused on one thing, a lot of other things are going to get neglected in life, and that's relationships and 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 there's times where where things will. Um, but you know, communicating that and and I'm you know even talking more about a relationship basis. You know, being married and and having you know getting ready for a competition, there, you have to be so la- lo- laser focused on every little aspect of your prep from your sleep, to your training, to your diet. I mean, the timing of things are important, keeping stresses down, um, and, you know, your energy levels are coming down as your calories are coming down, your body fat's coming down. So there's a lot of things that make you just really get tunnel vision on that and and certain things to sacrifice. And um, I think I've been able to do it for so long because I've created a balance, not only in time that when I'm off from competing, like right now I'm not getting ready for a competition, so I allow myself to do things that I wouldn't necessarily normally do, go out with, you know, to more dinners with friends, have a few drinks occasionally, you know, just do things that I wouldn't be able to do if I'm 10, 8, 2 weeks out of a competition where everything is so strict, you know. So I think balance is there and allows me to like kind of recharge my batteries, we'll call them discipline batteries, and I'm like, all right, 
we're fully charged and, and I'm going to do whatever it takes, you know, and my wife's super supportive and I'm able to communicate with her and she understands the process coming from a, you know, fitness background herself. So she knows the sacrifices that, that it takes between, you know, being tired and making sure you get to the gym, you know, like I don't have a woman at home that's, that's nagging me saying, why do you have to be at the gym, you know, twice a day? Why do you have to eat all this food? And, you know, so she's like, whatever you have to do, you got to do it, you know, and obviously there's an end goal um, that makes it a lot easier to get in that state you know absolutely when you found bodybuilding Mm -hmm. um it sounds like you did not go okay what i'm gonna do here this is cool and i'm into it i'm gonna wait once i've got like five good sponsors then i'm gonna really start to hit this right you did not do that no you just started blazing forward yeah absolutely it kind of was my you know like i said when i transitioned into really taking the discipline on of bodybuilding from sports. Um, From there, it was kind of like I knew I wanted to do it. And I went to school still. I still pursued, you know, full-time work. Um, And I think a lot of people sometimes get so caught on on that one, like, hey, I want to do this. And you're like, well, you got to figure out things are going to have to, you're going to have to do things to supplement wanting to do that. It wasn't like all of a sudden one day I decided to compete and all of a sudden, you know, I got all these contracts and I was able to, you know, live the, the good life and just train, eat and be a bodybuilder. Like that, that wasn't it. Um, you know, I was very fortunate. I had a lot of uh, great opportunities. I had sponsors as, as a young age at 18, 19. Uh, one of the first spots I had was like Muscle Tech, was like one of the old school supplement companies. And not that it was a paid thing, but it was like a way to get really a little bit of promotion behind you and some some credit to your name. They're putting you in magazines, um, some free product, that kind of stuff. So that helped when you're an 18, 19 year old kid, uh, really not making a lot of money living at home with your parents, but wanting to pursue one of your dreams, you know, going to school. Um, so from there, I ended up. Um, you know, wanting to pursue being a firefighter paramedic. And that's where I went to school in Detroit. And then I got, um, when I got hired in the city of Dallas, uh, back in, I was in like 2006, 2007, I ended up, um, you know, working full time as a firefighter paramedic. And a lot of people are under the impression, like, if you want to do something, say, become a professional, one of the top in my sport, like, I made it to one of the top levels working full time and one of the busiest ambulances is the city of Dallas, like working 24 hour shifts, 50 plus hour weeks. Like, and I was able to do that with just management being disciplined and, and really not making excuses. And I'm not one to make excuses. Like if I have to do something, I'm going to do it. And, and even if it sucks, I'm going to do it, you know? And cause I think if you learn and I learned this at a young age, like you, you can complain all you want and bitch and cry, but the only one that's really going to care is maybe your mom, and even then she's going to get tired of hearing it. So yeah. really nobody cares if you're complaining, so yeah. you just got to get it done. <laughs> that's a good point, man. I mean, uh, making excuses and complaining is just wasting yeah. energy at a certain point. Mm-hmm. And if you're already tired and you don't want to do something, why waste that little bit of energy you have yeah. left? Why not just put your head down? Hey, I got a question for you. When I was listening to the last podcast that uh, Joe Rogan did with Ronnie Coleman, mm-hmm. who's another local bodybuilding legend. legend. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Ronnie was, he talked a lot and I've heard him say this a lot. You know, he said, I had a talent for this. I was naturally strong. Is that, can anyone go, okay, I'm going to be a pro bodybuilder. So I'm going to do all these, I'm going to check all these boxes. Can anyone do that? Or is this a genetics and a talent type thing? Uh, There's a big part of it's genetic. I think on the elite level, especially, um, you know, to be on the Mr. Olympia stage, which I've been six times, it's you're talking an elite of the world. Six folks. Six. You know, awesome. and, and I've been top six is and number six was my best so far as last year. Um, but we're really genetics is a big part of it. But I there wouldn't be so many bodybuilding shows and I, I even promote several bodybuilding shows around the US if if it wasn't for everybody, and I really believe it is. Like fitness in that lifestyle is for everybody, whether you want to compete or not. But competing really gives somebody that goal to kind of say, "All right, I'm going to diet, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to eat very strict, and not you know go eat fast food every other day." Or because they have you set a goal, and if you know you got to be on stage and. It's lack of a better word, almost underwear. Like you're yeah. gonna want to look good, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you're barely even wearing those and some of that stuff, right? Man. right. Yeah, you're. Uh, it's all right there. Yeah. All the hard work, everybody's seeing it, or the lack thereof. Yeah, absolutely. But um, obviously the competition is is stiff. I mean the uh, the amount of work that goes into getting on a Mister Universe stage. What's the ramp up like? 
for that. Well, you know, I've been competing almost uh, since I was 18, so 17 years. Yeah. And um, it's been – it's definitely more of a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's mm-hmm. not like – Hey, I'm going to train, and I'm going to get as big as I can, and in, in, in one year, and that's where the misconception of bodybuilding is, and I think it's kind of that that taboo area it talks about. They just think, oh, if I just take a bunch of drugs, I'm going to get huge, and and that's really not the case. It's like somebody like Barry Bonds, like okay, he could take a some kind of performance enhancing drug, but or give somebody else that same drug, they're not going to hit 70 no. home runs. No. Like that's just the way it is. Like yeah. somebody could take exactly what Ronnie Coleman did, and they're not going to be Ronnie Coleman. No, so. There's there's the work aspect, you know. There's the genetics. There's the um, the nutrition. I think nutrition's one of the biggest. There, to me, there's three things in, in our industry. It's like genetics, it's nutrition, and it's training. And when all three of those are on the line, you, really the sky's the limit. You're gonna and the limit is really gonna be your genetic, you know, factor. Like if somebody's six foot five and kind of genetically a narrow person, no, they're not gonna be look like a Ronnie Coleman on stage. But there's not saying you can put on muscle, you can get in, in great shape, you know, single digit body fat levels and uh, look great, you know, doing it. So there is that fine, like ultimately, what's your ultimate goal with it? And and there is that. That's probably the ceiling is is your genetics, you know. Sure. Um, you know, if you're a 120 pound guy and you want to try to be 270 pound guy, like it's going to take either a really long time or there's going to be a lot of external factors. Seiko, but... it's going to take a while, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. He's wide. He's wide receiver, cornerback. So. That's right. Well, he's got speed. Like he can so outrun he, me. Yeah, and me, <laughs> and me times two. That's you right. and me two times. That's awesome. Um, the uh, the 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 will to win, the the drive to to do what it takes and to do more. Um, and the mental aspect. I've heard Joe Donnelly say this before. Um, when I go to the gym and I work out really hard, and I overcome my mind. Right. That's the, um, that, that's more important, he would say to me than even the byproduct of how my body looks. Now he's been on like seventy five magazine covers yeah. or whatever. So how the body looks is part of the business Absolutely. model there. Absolutely. But um, conquer the mind and the rest will follow. Yeah. I mean, that's something that once you kind of set the pattern, it sort of sustains itself. Absolutely. And I think, like, just you talking about mindset, like. Seeing 500 pounds on a bar and be like, all right, I'm going to get underneath that and squat that for 10 or 15 reps. Like, yeah, your mind's telling you no. Your body's like, I don't know if I want to do that. But you have to really turn on that switch to say, okay, I'm going to overcome that thought. I'm going to do this. Um, and that's really what will will make somebody be really good in the sport of fitness, bodybuilding, even, you know, powerlifting, anything in that kind of weight based area, we'll say. Because yeah. there's that, there is that, I have to go do this and that's really hard. Um, yeah. You know, and then it's, it's, you know, how strong is your body? How well are you trained, rested? There's just, there's all those little factors that play. Like I, if I know if I didn't eat as good one day, if I didn't get good sleep, I noticeably, you know, I notice a difference in the gym and, and there's just so many little factors that at this level, when you're kind of at that elite level, you really are so dialed in with your body. Um, there's a lot of really cool things, especially that as you get closer to a show, when you, when you watch your body change, um, it's almost daily, like the last few weeks, to see like uh. daily progression. Like you're just getting a little bit leaner, your skin's getting tighter. Um, and then the last few days, I mean, your body can change every 30 minutes. Like just the way, the, the amount of food, the amount of water, yeah. sodium. So it, it's really turned into a science. And I, I've really learned my body a lot over the years. I work with an amazing coach now, and, and uh, I've worked with several throughout my career. And I think one of the things um, – for this sport and even people like just trying to get fit, it's good to have some kind of nutritionist or coach or trainer because a lot of people have a tendency to overthink or want to overwork. That's, you know, for me, if, if I didn't have somebody kind of pulling the reins, I'd be like the dog that's just going to go straight forward. And, you know, and, and that sometimes is not, you know, more is not always better in that aspect. So it's kind of knowing your limits and then knowing where to pull back a little bit or add some food or cut back your training or whatever it is. So there's a lot of little things to play in, but it's cool to watch the process. I bet it is. It, is your is uh, your sleep always good because you're just so exhausted by the end of the day? Usually, is, but it took a while because when I worked as a firefighter for ten years, ah. um, you know, I had twenty four hour shift, and when you're up majority of that twenty four hours, your sleep patterns really get screwed up. So until I um, left that, I, I like semi retired. I still have my status with the city, but I'm I'm not working by any means. Um, it 
took a few years to kind of get back onto a normal sleep because I was a real light became a real light sleeper. Like as soon as I heard a noise, I was up because yeah. you hear that bell ring at two a.m. and three a.m. and four a.m. Like you become really kind of jumpy and and you, you you have a harder time to get into that like deep comfortable sleep. So, but now, yeah, I, I you know by the time I'm done training at the end of the day and doing everything I have to do, I, I'm exhausted. So yeah. it's you know yeah I could. Sit on the couch, close my eyes, and I'm out. You know, my wife's like, I don't know how you do that. And I'm like, well, it's, I've kind of trained myself to fall asleep fast. Yeah. But now I get to fall asleep and stay asleep. It's great. <laughs> I got to work on that, man. Uh, I got a few years on you, but man, my sleep has been getting worse and worse. And I've, I've been working on some stuff, but it's just, uh, it's it's uh, such an integral part. It really of, is. Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think we neglect that a well, lot. We're like, oh, we don't need. We don't need sleep or, you know, sleep when I die kind of mentality. And I get that. There's times where I'm like, you know, grinding, getting through things or, you know, business is in demand. And you're like, man, I got to, you know, put in the time and get up early and stay up late to do stuff. But, you know, don't don't rob Peter to pay Paul with, you know, your body because it'll it eventually it's going to break or it's going to be like, no, I, I'm done. You know, they'll let you know. And, yeah. and that's not a fun time to, or, or place to be in. Um, so I always tell people, you know, listen to your body and, and take care of it. And it's just like I, I use a lot of car analogies when I talk about the body. Like, you know, the better fuel you put into it, your car, the better it's mm-hmm. going to run. The better fuel you put in your body with food, the, the better you're going to perform. And the more you maintain it, like whether it's with sleep, it's just going to continue to be better. Yeah. So, um, What's your favorite part of the ramp up process? And then what's your least favorite part? the last like two days yeah you know, that's changed throughout my career and, and yeah i i think when you're younger and you're you're more focused on some things um to me the hardest part is the amount of food i have to eat it's really I, my food's dialed back right now because i'm not really getting ready for anything so um in the next about month or two i'll start ramping that up but when i'm getting ready for a competition it's seven meals a day and they're large meals it's not like i eat an apple and that's a meal like i'm eating Eight ounces of uh, a lean protein source, you know, um, a decent amount of carbohydrates, whether it's like, you know, 10 ounces of cooked potatoes or two cups of rice. An apple is a meal is what a liberal <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not you or me, brother. Uh, 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 organic, please. <laughs> uh, please. And from only certain suppliers, please, as that's, well. That's right. Yeah. But um, So yeah, it's like a job. Oh, yeah. Th- just that alone. Uh, you know, and then one, I think one of the enjoyable parts is kind of seeing all your hard work take really when I'm on stage is kind of the time like, okay, let's, let's do it. And that's the, when I go on stage and I'm, I, I feel confidence. I knew going into it is because I did everything I could do. I crossed every T dot, every I I've worked as hard as I could. I got no regret going into it and say, man, if I would have trained harder, if I would have did, you know, one more session of cardio or eight, you know, whatever it is. You know, if I know I did that, like, it's going to show. And I think a lot of life does that, too. Whatever, you know, if you did the homework and you showed up for that job interview and, and you're ready or, you know, whether it, whatever your job is and you feel like, you know, you're confident in it, you're going to perform at a higher level than somebody that just feels so-so. It, yeah. You know, or, like, kind of going through the motions, like you said. Yeah, most definitely. I get a lot of the people who watch are uh, old, broken-down rugby players like me. Lots of operations yeah. under the belt. And we'll yeah. talk about injuries in a second. All my people know I love talking about my injuries. I've appa- <laughs> I apparently do that a lot, I yeah. was told the other week. But um, what is some good low-impact cardio? Because you can't get out there and rip off a five-mile run. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm by no means am I a long-distance kind of person. I'm right. more of like a dragster. I kind of yeah. like the you know, 40 yards like or sprint. Like I, I've actually got into doing more um, – the the hit base cardio mm-hmm. stuff and really enjoy it. I'd rather do something for 15 20 minutes instead of doing like an hour or walk, you know, yeah. where it's kind of boring and I get like ADD cardio, you know, where I'm like yeah. all right, enough of this. Um but now it, you know, I could listen to your podcast doing if I got to go do an hour walk now there you and go. you know, make up for that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. But um yeah, I, I'm a big believer in in cardiovascular activity number mm-hmm. one, but um, really what works for you or what, you know, you gotta, gotta have fun with some things, you know, sure. some people think like it has to be, you know, just has to suck all the time. Like find some things to spark your interest. If it, if gotcha. it is CrossFit, let it be CrossFit that you want to do lifting and cardio, but yeah. you know, switch it up and, and enjoy it because you're going to get burned out. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm sick of this. You no know, doubt. So. if it is CrossFit, keep it to yourself because <laughs> when you come to parties, that's all you talk about. That's and, right. Uh, oh my God. That's cool. Cause nobody talks about the Cowboys anymore. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, 
about the year. It's a bummer. Where are you fan? Seahawks fan. Okay, right. I'm hey. from up there. Um, but we just lost to the damn Giants, bro. So I mean, this I don't even know crazy. what's going on. Yeah, I'm ready for aliens to show up. 2020. You just never know. You know, aliens. <laughs> I believe uh, will be ruled by the Chinese here within two months. I mean, the the sky's the limit with the sky's, craziness. Yeah, it really is. What's the year been like for you? I mean, there, a bunch of stuff get canceled. It did. I mean, uh, as everybody listening to this or in, you know, that's living right now is dealing with the madness of the world. Um, for us, you know, the, the year started off normal. I was, I, I went to, or did all my shows that I planned on doing. Really, it was just the, the one was the Arnold Classic in Ohio. And it's one of the biggest shows in the world. It's, it's, there's like the Mr. Olympia and the Arnold are kind of, kind of right next to each other as far as the biggest shows. And that's um, the su- the Super Bowl of our sport is the Mr. Olympia, and this is the Arnold's right with it. And it's one of the shows I really want to win. Every year, it's in the Columbus, Ohio. It's Arnold's big show that he's you know. There's usually two hundred fifty thousand people that walk through the expo. Thousands of competitors from all different sports, from fencing to bodybuilding, powerlifting. Hmm. It's really amazing to just go see. I bet. Um, been do been going there for years, and in the last few years, I've been doing it. I got. Um, third this last year there and uh or this year so it was um it was a very unique show because that was exactly when the the shutdowns start happening so there was two days before the show or or four or five days before the show they told us the show's gonna be canceled and here you are putting in 12 weeks of work and they're saying you know you sacrifice through christmas you're, you're dieting and training through all that and then there's like, oh, the show's going to be canceled, no expo, no show, because of their sh- COVID shutdowns. And this was right at the beginning of March. And uh, so, but we still had plans. Okay, I'm still going to go there. They still said show up because we're going to try to make it happen. And then literally Thursday before the show is they said the expo is going to be canceled, which is crazy because knowing there's 250,000 people that walk through there every year. Um, looking back, and it was probably a good thing if that was kind of at the height of what yeah, COVID would be. Maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. But the um, – they still gave us a green light on the show, which was awesome because you know you're like, all right, I'm ready to get, I'm ready to compete. Like I did all this work, I don't want to you know, be told no. Yeah. So at right after that, everything else. So when they me. told you that it was canceled, did you did you you're like, nope, I'm gonna just keep. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I had hope, I had hope. Like we're, you know, I have a feeling it's gonna still go off. Gotcha. They're gonna work as hard as they can through. So you weren't straight to the Miller highlight <laughs> Cheetos. <laughs> no, okay. No, no. As much as you know, you're. It's kind of nice to say, okay, I could kind of relax, but I was like, no, nah, we're I'm, I, right now. I, I got that that warrior mindset where I'm yeah. like, I'm ready to go to war, and and that's all I could you know really focus on. Um, so after that, there was a show that was going to happen two weeks later in Australia. It was the other Arnold, they called Arnold Australia, and at the time, I was I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I'm like, there's no way the show's going to happen, especially on that side of the world. So um, I decided to pull back from that one, and sure enough, you know, four days after the Arnold Ohio, they canceled the Australia show. Some guys already made the trip over there, and were stuck over there for like a month. Yeah. And I mean, it, that's where I was like, you know, I'm gonna let this play out. And as the year progressed, you know, a lot of things were canceled. A lot of the shows, um, the Mr. Olympia show, that's usually September, actually got moved to the end of December, which is coming up. And um, I decided like. Even the way they've been canceled stuff so much, I still don't feel confident that it's going to be even run normal or even yeah. even sometimes it may even not happen. Well, they might force you to take the vaccine to compete. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what for this year? Yeah, we were still like, things were still able to happen. We had our bodybuilding show here, the Kukla Classic, we yeah. put on every year. Um, so a lot of things. How kind long have you been doing that for? This was our fifth year. Badass, so, man. That's yeah. awesome. And we picked up two more this year. We had one in, in uh, Michigan, actually, and then we had one in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, which awesome. is outside Denver. So yeah. very cool to be able to expand uh, things and see it grow. Good for you, man. Mm-hmm. That's badass. Uh, you mentioned the Arnold Classic. Was is was he your was he your, your role model, the I, guy you looked to he, the most? He's one of the guys, I think, definitely that I looked up to starting in the sport. Yeah. You know, I watched the Pumping Irons and the old school right. bodybuilding films and, you know, watched Terminator growing up yeah. and all his, his right. films. And you're like, man, this guy, if I follow what he did, you know, I, he's living the American, a governor the American dream. You yeah. know, he's come from, you know, another country and, and get into bodybuilding, win the top of that, go on to movies and everything else. Um, so definitely is is a is a iconic figure in our sport. But there's other guys, you know, like Ronnie Coleman's obviously a legend. Just yeah. watching his his ability was amazing. And then uh, guys like Jay Cutler was also a um, somebody I looked up to because of what he did on the business side. He wasn't just kind of a one trick pony. I'm a bodybuilder, and that's it. So 
I knew that if you want to have a career after bodybuilding, you could still be involved in the industry, but how do you do it? And to me, it was, you know, branding things properly and, and looking at it like a business, not just a sport. Um, so that's kind of where I had my mindset as I've gone through my career. Gotcha. On the business side of things, do people automatically discount you right when you walk through the doors they're like oh here comes a meathead who can't do math or whatever Is right can't a, can't complete a sentence can't yeah. do math can't has a um, limited vocabulary yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah. they no zero about geography they they really it. do um not that i hold it against them i mean that's kind of human nature is to be somewhat judgmental and to see things and be stereotypical um i don't let that affect you know i i i like when i actually start engaging with somebody talking to somebody or they meet me and they're like man you're really nice or yeah. you know I'd exp i'm like well what do you think i'm just gonna come and like punch you in the face and be you know i want to eat your head or something like I, yeah that's not it but for me i i enjoy being a very you know i treat people the way i'd want to be treated sure you know and um I think one of the lessons that I was taught early is like the same people you see coming up in life, the same people you see coming down, whether, you know, in, in success, like, you know, there's, you see people climb the ladder of success and they turn into assholes. They, you know, they don't talk to pe you know, friends because, you know, that they've had for their whole life because, oh no, I'm too good for, you know, there's power or success goes to people's heads. It really does. So no doubt. Um, uh, I don't forget where I came from and, and, um, and that's always been something that, that I think people appreciate. I think if you can do that and, and stay humble through your successes, it, it really translates to – I've kind of known as like the blue-collar bodybuilder. I didn't – it wasn't handed a silver, you know, plate and say, here, spoon-fed things. You know, I had to, I had to work for it. And um, and people can appreciate the hard work that goes into it and, and being humble about it. Yeah. Um, I wasn't familiar with you until I saw you on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, who's – what? <laughs> What's going on? This is awesome. Um, what was the lead up, lead up to that? Like, well, so my wife and, and do I, do y'all work together Yeah. on that? Oh, you mean with Shark Tank or my wife and I? Your wife and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my wife and I do, we, um, we, what's that like? It's actually really good. Is it? You know, my wife and I are best friends and not only do I love her, but I really like her. And I think a lot there of people love each other, but sometimes they don't like yeah. each other. There's, there's, there's kind of a. There's a, there's a thing there that to really look into for guys that are single that are, want to get married or like, consider, consider you really the double threat yeah the like and love yeah, yeah yeah so we we really are very very similar but does she like you oh she this yeah, is she, the question she really does okay she really All right, does. good deal you know good we got deal. a great balance where That's I'm awesome. weak she's strong and vice versa and um, so we started kind of we've being in the industry uh, the fitness industry they're always promoting other products and you know endorsements and stuff like that. So we were getting a lot of requests for, say, apparel. She did, especially because anytime she'd make a post with a big following, she'd be, you know, girls would ask her, "What pants are you wearing? What yeah. shirt are you wearing? What glasses? What hair products you use? That kind of stuff." So I was like, "Why don't we try to, you know, do a, a brand just based off of what you, you know, kind of an organic, your organic following, and build that brand from that?" Um, so we started that just really from like an eight by ten and a few tank tops, you know, just to say, hey, we'll try it out, you know. And 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 I had a little background. I made some T-shirts, like you know, my Make Body Thing Great Again yeah. stuff. So I, I I knew a little bit of what to do sure. going into it. So we started very small, um, again selling some tank tops and, and just basic things. And then you know we're like, right, let's that's one of the th main requests she got was leggings, like. Again, I never thought I'm gonna kind of Tarantino this story. I never thought I would know what I know about apparel and what goes into it, as I do now. But to go back yeah. to where getting into wanting to do leggings and in women's fitness apparel, you know, leisure wear, it's kind of the legging has become the new jeans. Oh yeah. But I don't mind it because I think leggings are pretty hot. You know, it's my, see my wife's butt. I, I'm all for it. So, yes. <laughs> yes, the yoga pant legging invention of the 2000s yeah. has been an outstanding part it, of the 2000s. It sure has. Yeah. So we we um, <clears throat> we're looking for a manufacturer. Just the way things kind of work. I, I was working with a guy at the time. He had a his brother was actually manufacturing leggings in South America, hmm. and. Made that connection, and then we made the first investment into buying some leggings. We, I think we invested like eight thousand dollars. Right, we're gonna do our first run, eight thousand. Place this order, got it, and you know, within like a month and a half, it's, we sold out. And I was like, okay, we're on to something here. Yeah. So we, you know, we we're able to do some small runs, and then kind of get it in, sell it out, get it in, sell it out. So that kind of turned into all right. Let's just keep building this, and 
you know, invest really the first two years was just everything we made. We just kept putting it back in and growing or, you know, ordering more and more and more. And, um, it, it did really well. And, and it was being a huge fan of shark tank. I think majority of entrepreneurs or anybody that likes business in any way looks at that show as like something that they could learn or even want to be on. And cause I need the help. Yeah. My wife, a huge fan. We used to watch every episode and, um, and, she ended up submitting an email saying, Hey, I would love to be a part of the show. Would you, you know, here's my information, sent pictures and, and everything. And then about a month or two later, she ended up getting a phone call and saying, Hey, we're very interested. Here's the paperwork, you know, and it's a, probably a six to eight month process of paperwork and videos you got to submit to kind of sure. go through that. But we end up getting there and getting down to like the 180, I believe, that they actually take to film. They say they get about 40,000 applicants a, wow. uh, a year or per season. And to be narrowed down to about 180, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so we were able to go on there, end up getting a deal with Damon John. It was yeah. it was a very nerve-wracking experience. Also, um, you know, we've been on some of the biggest stages in the world. Been you know, I've been in my, lack of better words, underwear, posing trunks in front of 12,000 people, probably clo- – maybe a million in front of on, on like a live stream of the Olympia, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's that nerve, but this was a whole nother nervous. Like I knew like five to 10 million people are going to see this yeah. and I don't want to sound like an idiot. And there's all these, you know, multi-millionaires in front of me that I'm trying to pitch a business to. And there's, a couple I, see, billionaires. I see probably 50 cameras in the, in the, you know, there. And I'm like, man, this is okay. This is really nervous now. So, um, her and I, she's an amazing saleswoman. Like she knows how she, she has done a lot of infomercials and she's extremely talented in, in that and can speak extremely well and has taught me a lot in that aspect. So she really pitched the business. Amazing. They loved it. And it was kind of a, there was a really good respect. I think if people go into shark tank and say, Hey, I'm going to, I want to give you 3% for a million dollars. You know, they're they immediately, they're going to eat you up. Yeah. So we gave a fair shake. You know, we said we wanted two fifty for 25% and or 20%. And then, um, I think the counter was two fifty for 33%. And we were like, okay. So, you know, we talked about it for a minute and then, uh, we ended up agreeing with Damon John who ended up, yeah. you know, and I, and, and one of the cool things that a lot of people don't know about the show is, you know, when you're in there, you're in there for like 30 average is like 45 minutes. And that was about the time we were in there. And they only, you know, obviously edit it down about eight minutes yeah. that they show, and and they twist some things around a little bit. But, and I was, and that was one of the things my wife worried about was like, God, I hope they don't make us look bad. Like, you know, you don't know how they're gonna chop things, or I mean, you know, the news. They, you know, yeah. they, they could. They make some. They make people. Some people on there look like chumps. Yeah. Man. So Especially I mean, when they can't back their numbers up or whatever, ex- right? It's it, not like it, their big thing. <laughs> exactly. But if you can't explain the uh, the premise of your idea in thirty seconds. Then I mean, you really it is out. that it is that pitch. You got that that minute and a half minute right off the bat that they want to like hear it, and that's your hook. Like you have to have the hook, and then at that point, it's like, all right, we want to know more about it. And then if they are, again, you got to know your numbers. Yeah. And then you know, the, you start. I mean, when you're thinking, you don't have any paper in front of you, and if you screw up, there is no like, hey, can I start over? Like right. it's one take. It's film live. Like you're. You're literally you're going lying, in the Shark Tank. You better have those lies memorized. <laughs> oh, no kidding! Yeah. yeah, man, that does sound nerve wracking. Was it uh, when you were like, "Hey, we're going to get into this um, athleisure wear space"? I mean, mm-hmm. that's a very competitive yeah. space. Yeah. I mean, that's like crazy competitive. <laughs> was it? Was it your uh, your mindset of oh, brick wall? That's what I run through. Let's do this. A little bit, a little bit like, you know, having that little bit of entrepreneur spirit in you as well as Where'd like. Where'd that come from? I think it's more or less seeing people. Um, I've always had a lot of older friends, you know, kind of an old spirit. Gotcha. And I felt like I always watched the, the people that had their own business and be their own boss. I, I really admired that. And I was like, man, that's I want to be my own boss, you know, and and. That really led me into wanting to ha- have my own business, and I didn't know what it was going to be. This obviously turned into be one of the things, um, but I, a lot of things in business, no matter it's whether it's apparel or it's like owning your own landscape company, there's a, a lot of the same um, things that happen in that. The way you run it, the way you manage it, the way you hire people, fire people. You, um, obviously, some there's different things, but a lot of the same aspects apply. So. 
realizing that I was like, well, I guess we're going to try this legging thing. You know, again, never thinking I was going to have a legging company or women's apparel company that I'd help manage with my wife in my life. But we end up did, and it was, it's been a great learning process and, and as much struggle as it is at times. And as much like I, you know, want to pull your hair out and there's, there's mistakes and, you know, employees make mistakes, manufacturers make mistakes. There's so many things that can go wrong. But they're all learning processes, and and you have to take mistakes and learn from them. Like if you did everything right, you'd be, you know, if something ended up happened terrible, like you'd be, don't know what to do. Yeah. But from learning from mistakes along the way, it really makes you better, sharper, wiser, and whatever you're doing. Definitely. Um, what's the hardest part about being your own boss, especially with regard to employing people? For me. Uh, I guess it, employing people is difficult, I think, because you expect to have the, somebody to have the same work ethic right. or, or or caring about your business as you do. And really nobody will. And, and you have to learn to accept that and be like, okay, but you want somebody that is passionate or you know and willing to work hard. I think if you have somebody with um, – I think one of the – if I always said if I if I put an application to somewhere now, I think one of the top things that I would have on mine is just common sense. And I said somebody handed me an application and had one thing and it says I have common sense. You're, yeah, I'm a hire. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's one that's really missing. Yes, but um, maybe uh, add I will hustle. I am coachable. Yeah. to that, and yeah. uh, you might be a new manager at Autograph. If you, yeah, I mean, uh, you don't need this whole two-page your resume. If you hit those three things, I mean, you're hired those at are this the point. Bullet points, sign it, date yeah, it. Yeah, I think, and it's cool to see the the, and like you said, you know, the apparel space is extremely competitive. When we got in it, it wasn't as competitive as it is now because there's a lot more brands. Which is cool to see, and and even when somebody comes to me and says, you know, hey, I want to be my own, I want to open a have my own T-shirt company or leg, and I'm like, God bless you, you know, like uh, I'll even tell you what you need to do, and, and it's not easy, you know, but everybody thinks they can do it, but, um, you know, they always have the stats like after one year, so many business fails, and after five years, so many business fails, and 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 the attrition rate's very high, but um, you know, if you're able to stick through the hard times and learn from mistakes and, and not get buried from mistakes, because there's been some manufacturing mistakes happen. Literally, like, last year, right before Black Friday, we had this huge shipment come in, and 70% of it was faulty. Like, you know, and they, you're like... like the sizes were off? Or? Sizing, construction issues, some of them had different material than we ordered. Like, I mean, that's just problems that... You know, when that happens, it's out of your control. But so, okay, how do you how do you figure? Like, I'm more of a problem solver. Like, okay, we got a problem. Let's figure it out. Let's get through it, and let's, let's move on. Not just sit and be like, oh man, this is the end of the world kind of thing. So, um, having that mindset is my wife and I have a good balance there because I'm like, all right, let's get through this. Let's just go here. And she's like, well, let's think about this. You know, so we kind of meet in the middle there sure. and, and figure it out, and, and then we move on. So. Um, the, when, when adversity comes up in business like that, the, uh, the focusing on the solution instead of on the problem is a lot of times where you're able to get yourself through it, yeah. especially when things are out of your control, because when you do delegate things and you do have to trust, or you have an overseas supplier, um, you, you can't be over there making sure that quality control is good. I mean, even with FaceTime, what are yeah. you going to? Yeah, I know. You can't feel it. You can't touch it. No. You're hoping you're taking people's words on things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it. That's been it, it's been a learning process, and in looking at it, whatever we do next, it, it's definitely made us a lot stronger in in becoming a, or being our own bosses and being business owners. And you know, you can, and, and there's that confidence, like okay, if I decided to go work for somebody else, like I'd know what they would expect now, and I know that I could run any company that I, I could, you know, would be hired by. Would you ever go work for somebody? I don't. They have to I, make I don't. You I don't know. You could. Yeah, they, they would. So, yeah. But you know, it's. I, I've thought about it, but a lot. I think a lot of I would work with like a friend of mine that you know that we have a good relationship that he's running a company. I'd, I'd help him and grow it with him and. You know, be a good partnership there, and and um, I don't see myself as really an eight to four guy anymore. Yeah. Not saying that I wouldn't humble myself if I needed to to go ahead and, you know, flip burgers or something if it got that bad. Like you know, I, I'm willing to do it. Right. Um, but at the time, like I, I think like when you, and when you've kind of, gotten your your mindset to be at a higher level, you you know, you elevate your thinking, you're elevating your life in a lot of ways. And a lot of it, like we talked about is, is your mindset. Like, are you going to be kind of have that average mindset and who you're surrounding yourself with and what are you speaking? Those kind of things. Um, you know, if you surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up or going to 
make you want to level up like we talked about you know whether if, you know, if you're hanging around people that make forty thousand dollars a year you're likely going to be making it's just kind of the way it is yeah. it's like you know but if you're if you're hanging around people that are making you know a million dollars a year and they're really successful whether it is in their marriage um you know that's you're going to have a lot of that that leak over into what you're doing it's just by your alignments by um you know if you're hanging out with guys that are running around and their wives and going doing stupid things like you're likely going to fall into that trap like so yeah it's the same kind of idea with business and life. Yeah, it really is. Um, you talked about that positive mindset, um, the importance of fostering that positivity. What comes out of your mouth? I'm sure you've read the book, The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. um, what comes out of your mouth? So if you're a leader at home, if you're a leader at work, if you're a leader in the gym, yeah. and the first thing out of your mouth all the time is, hey, let's make this problem way bigger than it is, or hey, yeah. uh, the sky is falling, or your team is going to... It, they're, they're going to follow along with that. Even if you have positive people following you, um, what do you do every day to make sure that the words coming out of your mouth are positive? That's been a huge thing. I think I, I've especially learned from my wife and I give her a ton of credit for it is, is my words, the, speak, the words I speak, you know, the Bible says, for, you know, out of your heart, your mouth speaks mm, out of the abundance <laughs> yeah. of the heart. Yeah. And, a lot of that's true, and a lot of things we say just subconsciously, not even think about it, and and it is a, a more there's a negative connotation to that word, like saying like man, you know that drive home is gonna kill me. Like when you think of, that's a negative confession, and when you think about that, like like my wife's called me on that, and I used to do that, and now sometimes I call her on on things she'll say, you know, and she'd be like, yeah, you're right, you know, and there's not it's not a thing of like trying to be right or wrong, it's just trying to better yeah. each other, um, and then when you really start watching your words that makes a huge difference. Like just taking maybe what would be a negative thing and making it into a positive thing. And, um, you know, speaking more positive things like, man, I'm going to have a great day. Instead of waking up like, man, I'm tired. This sucks. I don't want to go. Like when you, st you're just compiling all that negativity and like, you're just pulling yourself down, but go ahead and, you know, start that day. Like I'm a, I'm a very optimistic person this year. Definitely tested that. Mm. I think, um, you know, not, there's been times where, and, and I know there's a lot of people out there suffering from this, you know, whether you call it depression, whether you call it like just lack of motivation, um, what 2020 and, and what the government and what the COVID, you know, restrictions and all that have, have done to not only human mind, but just our, 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 it's affected us in a lot of, I think somebody like me, I know it's affected me in some ways and I'm not the person like that really thinks about it. I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just keep being me, but yeah, I think it's it's a lot of this has changed us in some ways. So for me, I always try to just keep it positive, um, and and not you know and, and and I find myself sometimes even the stuff I take in, whether it's through social media or watching the, the news or watching th the, th where the things you watch too also will affect you. Like if you're watching doom and gloom on the news every day, you know two three times a day, like you're gonna start the heaviness is gonna be on you, even though when you don't think about it. Like there's times my wife calls me on that. She's like, "You're watching the news too much. Like you're you're getting angry at the world and just things like that." And I get it, you know. So sometimes I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna turn off the TV for a week or two and and just kind of focus on the things I have to do and not just take in too, so much negativity." Well, um, uh, fear is uh, so powerful, right? It and it's so invasive. So um, once someone is has succumbed to fear, uh, they they're easy to conquer. Um, you seem fearless. I, I pride myself on being pretty fearless, although yeah. sometimes it's fake. But I mean, I, fuck it, let's yeah, go. Let's do it. Um, the 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 thing that gives me that edge of being fearless is that when I open, from the time I open my eyes to the time I fall asleep, yeah. I'm like I am putting the pedal to the metal, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give it my best today. Yeah. Even if we don't have the best day, yeah. I'm gonna I am I'm gonna give it everything. So I'm poured out at the end of the day. You know, Absolutely. and um, then I'm just like, you know, bring it on. Come what may. Yeah, because at um, the end of the night, you could put your head on the pillow and be like, you know what? I gave my all and and you can you can rest like that's to me. That's I can go to bed knowing I gave it all for that day. Yeah. Now, it's not saying like, you you know, you, you worked every ounce of energy out of you and, and you know, that kind of doesn't necessarily mean that. But it means like, you know, you applied yourself the best you could. You did everything you could that day. And, you know, no, you're not going to maybe check off every checkbox on your, on your list every single day. But you know what? You wake up the next day and you, you just continue working at it. Um, as an athlete, are you conscious of the fact that our um, – I've never competed at the level you have, but I've, I've competed at some high levels. Uh, are, are 
inclination, second nature is always to stay as busy as possible. Right. Just always keep moving. Um, do you notice that in yourself? And what do you do to try to, I know you're way into cars and some other hobby type stuff to try to keep that balance that we yeah. talked about like 30 yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much a, uh, I like to stay busy. Like I, yeah. I totally relate to that, you're you know, a shark. Yeah. And, and that's my, um, my wife's always like, you always got to be doing something, you know, whether it's washing the car, whether it's thinking about, you know, writing something or reading something or like, I don't see myself sitting a lot and just like watching basic TV. Yeah. Like I'm not a, a TV person that much. Um, sometimes it's nice. So you don't watch uh, reruns of the Ellen show? No, no, no I don't. Neither do I, man. Even I, like, it's Dr. funny because it, if my wife goes out of town, I really, I barely turn on the TV yeah. at the house. Like, I'm always just doing something. I may listen to music or something, but uh, just some for some noise. For the most part, I'm not like, I'm going to just sit and watch TV all day. Like, I yeah. can't physically do that. Yeah. Even to make it through, like, a football game, I'm like, okay, like, yeah. just done yet? Like Football's <laughs> tough, man. So much stop, start. That three hours, too. You should check out a rugby match sometimes. Start and over in 90 minutes. Okay. Half Two 80 time. minute halves it. with the 10 minute halftime. Wow. And you're good at no commercials. Nice. Yeah, it's just going. Okay. It's awesome. You know, I got to learn the rules of that sport because that's when I I'll uh, I'll sit down with you for 20 minutes. We'll have you you'll be an old an old pro. Okay. You'll know everything. Nice. You'll be like, "That was that legal?" And I'll be like, "No, that wasn't." <laughs> that's why that guy just got red carded. That's awesome. Yeah. Um the uh yeah, that that whole staying busy thing, um I think a lot of people discount that mm -hmm. because I think that uh, the Bible also says idle hands are the devil's workshop, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what the, the an idle mind is his handiwork. Absolutely, you're just sitting around. You're not productive, mm -hmm. and uh, bad things yes. come from that. Big time, big yeah. time. What uh, you said? You like to write? I mean, what, I mean not necessarily write. I, I, Poetry, bro. No, no. It, it, whether it's kind of get caught up on emails or yeah, something sure, like sure. that. Like, I'm not much of a writer. Um, my wife is, and I have several friends that are amazing writers, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm more of a listener, like, when it comes to things. I, I, My wife's a talker, so it's not like two people trying to talk over each other. Sure. So that's, where, like, another balance we have in our relationship. So for me, I, I'm more of a listener. I like to learn. Um, and a lot of it's through observation or listening to things. And um, – and, uh, and there, there's there's something to say about that. I think that's a good quality to have. I think some people, you know, call it shy or call it, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like, use that, what some people look as a, a negative thing to, you know, that, that could be a positive thing, too. Like, you know, you're more of a learner. You, you're more of a critical thinker, a, a processor to make it happen. That's what I consider myself more than, hey, I'm just going to talk and just kind of go crazy and make this happen one way or another. So I like to be more strategic on it for sure. Is uh, some of the some of the speaking that you've been doing, the public speaking and mm -hmm. things like that, is that something that's outside of your comfort zone a little bit? A little bit, you know. Yeah. But I know, but like, you've been on stage in your I've, trunks. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And I know there's things that I feel like the more life experience I have, and the more I feel there's value I can have and, and offer. Because you know, it, I think if if you can't really have a testimony without being tested in life. So for me, it's been through the, the, the trials of competing, through the trials of business, through the trials of relationship and all that kind of stuff and able to, you know, okay, I put it to me now at 35 years old and see where I'm at and be, okay, what I've learned from. And, um, you know, I'm sure at, at every five or 10 years of your life, you look back, man, if I know what I knew now 10 <laughs> years ago, I'd be like, shit, that life would have been a lot better now. But no doubt. You know. <laughs> God. <laughs> What I wouldn't pay yeah, to yeah. go back five years yeah. but keep this mind, yeah. So I think there is there is a lot of people that put out a lot of great information out there. I think one of the guys that I, I'm a very close friend of mine, I almost consider him like a brother to me, Ryan Stuman, you know, hardcore closer, yeah. um, has taught me a lot about, you know, business and, and kind of the, your mindset. And, um, you know, he has a book. He came out, G-Code, and he's got some, some great insights on there of, you know, how to live life in, in business and – um, the four F's, right? Yeah. yeah. Family, fitness, finances, exactly. faith. Yeah. yeah. So, you, I mean, able to apply some of those concepts to life and that, that goes, you know, again, surrounding yourself, the right people, alignments in life, all those play a big, big factor in, in where you could take yourself in things, you know? For sure. Um, 
I know that I think it's on your wife's Instagram page. I don't follow her because I had, you know, I mean, I'm just not. Just I, gonna go, you could, you, you could. Know, I, th- right. I think uh, uh, <laughs> she's I, actually a very. Um, she's not a all like let's just say lack of better words tits and ass kind of yeah. influencer. She's a puts out quality stuff. Yes. Yeah, I think she's got salt and light on as her bio on yeah. there. I saw that. I was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, I. My I grew up my my dad's a preacher so that's why when you spit out a Bible verse I'm like yeah, yeah I've read through that book a few times <laughs> yeah. cover to cover in a year used to be used to get you know recognition at our church that's for awesome. going yes that's you'd awesome. read you'd read a little bit of the New Testament and a couple chapters of the Old every day and you uh-huh. get through the whole thing so, yeah yeah um, that that law that's law of attraction though right so Absolutely. if and and uh, if you're not leading with words which words are so damn hollow. Mm-hmm. Anyone can be the loudest. I mean, yeah. we see that in the media now. Absolutely. But when you're actually living a life that other people are like, man, whatever that guy's got, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the muscles. I'm talking yeah. about whatever that mindset is, whatever that light that's shining on them. I want that. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Is that that's um that's just the way you guys live your lives? It is. And and you know, I, I try not to I try to stay humble with that because there's time, you know, obviously you you have like you said, the law of attraction. People are attracted to success or, you know, whether it's looks or whatever it is, um, you know, you have to, for me, I, I just want to continue to be a bright light, you know, in a dark world. You know, I feel the, the fitness industry has some some dark sides to it and, and you know, like there's, there's a lot of haters in it or there's a lot of negativity sometimes and um, – so I always try to continue to be a bright light, be a, a, you know, speak a good word for people, be encouraging to people. And, you know, there's a lot of people like, you know, I know where I was at when I was 18 and 20 and 25 and 30 competing and, and, you know, people I looked up to and you could say, I admired their work ethic. I admired the way they lived their life. So I want to continue to be a, a, somebody that somebody could look up to, you know, be an inspiration um, and kind of explain or put out stuff that I do along the way to, you know, show the path that I've taken and, and not just kind of like, Hey, I'm here. Look how great I am. Look at, you know, a car I drive or look at the house I live in, you know, yeah. something that somebody can just rent for the day and put up yeah. on, on social media. Lots of people but, do that. <laughs> a lot of people do. Lots I just want to be real. That. Like, yeah. you know, if I met me, like I'd be like, oh, I want to say like, man, that was a cool dude. Like yeah. I want to hang out with that dude. Like, right. so I always look at it like that way. Look at it from like third person almost, sure. you know? And, and I think if you, can do that and, and be a little more real and not feel like you not really care about what people think necessarily. I think mm-hmm. that's one thing that too many people do. And that's kind of a, hu- a normal thing of human nature is like, you know, you want to be accepted. You want to be, um, you know, do the right things a lot of times or, or to be cool or, you know, it started from, I think, in, when you were in school as a kid. Like you want to be the cool kid. You want to hang out with the cool kids. You want to do the right things. And I think it carries on through life, but when you kind of understand, like, it really doesn't matter what people think, just do the right things, it's going to work out. <laughs> 100%. I mean, uh, when you come across people who are true, genuine, the genuine article, yeah. it's it's different because yeah. there's so much out there that's fake. Like, maybe what you see on social, you think you're going to meet someone, and then they they are just a jerk yeah. or whatever. Absolutely. And it's like, whoa, what's, what's going on with that? I mean, you and I are old enough to know that most of what's on social is – pretty damn fake yeah but lots of of, yeah lots of uh lots of the generation that's younger than us does not i mean that's the reality really i know it is and and that kind of hit me about uh, five years ago when i was having dinner with my wife and our waitress was young and i think she knew us from seeing us in a video or something from social media and uh we just got talking to her like you know what do you want to do and she's like i want to be a youtuber and I was like, wait a second, people really like, yeah. w- that is life goals now. Is be- now, I'm not saying you can't make a life living at being a YouTuber. YouTubers are bo- YouTubers are boxing people now. Yeah, exactly. Like and they're like the new celebrity. So I get that. But at the same time, like that's a whole new generational thing that I had, you never thought could be. Um, but, you know, I always tell people, don't, al- don't always believe what you see online, like especially in like the fitness world or – um, celebrity world, but more than, I see it a lot in the fitness world because I can attest for it. You know what goes on in the celebrity world, I may not know all the way, but for the fitness world, you know what what somebody may put out a picture like looking insanely lean and crazy. It's to me, it's like a lot of times people will take a ton of pictures when they're in shape. So I'm going to use like an instance like for for me seeing this as sometime a competitor, and you see your fellow competitors, guys you're going against. 
will put out pictures from like a previous show and like that they were real close to the show being like really conditioned and then they may put a, that picture like four weeks out and there'll, there'll be a teaser like hey this is where i'm at and you're like oh man i'm way behind so there's like that mental sure. aspect or somebody saying like they eat this outrageous amount of food and you're like you don't do that or like lift this um, ridiculous amount of weight that you know they can't lift um that there have been people that caught lifting fake weights you know so yeah and, Brad and, and, Castleberry. yeah exactly yeah. so like seeing that like I get pissed at that because, one, it discredits a lot sometimes with the things we do. You know, when they're trying to put out real stuff, you know, people are going to uh, start questioning that. Like, well, is that real? Is he for real with that? But also, it, it it's a – you're lying to, say, a younger kid that's probably 18, inspiring, wanting to, to lift, and then he's only lifting 100 pounds, and they're, this guy's lifting 400 pounds above his head, and, it, the guy, and it's discouraging for that kid. And the guy's like, man, I'm never going to be able to lift that. Like, so then it's – like so, to me, that's the negative in the the shitty part to social media. Yeah. But there is a good part when you can be a light, when you can put out a good word, sure. and somebody can follow you and be like, "Man, I really like what this guy has to say." Um, and you're not going to please everybody. They're gonna, like not not even so much haters, but people will disagree with you. But I'll have an open disagreement with somebody, you know, um, whether it's political, or religious, whatever. But I'll hear that people other people disagree with you politically. Oh, absolutely! Oh, like, damn. you know, but I'll hear it. I want to hear your opinion. What's that like? Feed me your opinion. And I'll digest it, and, I, and if I think it's got, I'm not going to knock it. Like we're all we're all entitled to our own opinions, and they may not be right, but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say okay, that's you could have your own opinion, but you know look at some maybe these facts and see you know. But immediately, like when somebody is, is so shut off to not have a constructive conversation about it, that's that's where the problem lies. I think that's a lot of problem with society now. Yeah, people are so like shut off to other opinions or other views of something like it's become. It's become an issue, a really big issue, I think. And it's, yeah, they just go straight personal. Absolutely, it's, it's argue, 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 personal, personal. We're yeah. not having like. Whoa. It's more even getting just straight to personal now. Yeah. Like I love, I love for point, instance, counterpoint, personal. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm close with a, with a lot of guys that that are more on the political side too of of social media. Um, Take guy, naps, yeah, Bobby Sauce, Alita. Bobby Sauce, yeah. you know, like Dan Bongino, yeah. and um, so like the DC Drano, and even like Don Jr. I've met a few times, and and I know those, um, you know, I saw a comment on on their their post that they put up, and 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 it's, and I do it more of like a, a little bit like more funny, you know, stuff. Like I'm not attacking anybody, and it's right. always like just to kind of throw a little funny comment in there. And the amount of, of people that'll just attack, like, and and I don't, I'm, I don't get into it with people. I'm not like, you know, if somebody has like, will question it. Like, there's been people where, like, when COVID happened, and I was kind of throwing some facts that people were putting out that weren't seeing that from watching the news, and I'd be like, well, think about this, and I'd put this little fact in front of them, and I actually had a guy not too long ago. We went back and forth about some COVID facts and about. A month ago, he messaged me from like back when we were talking about this in May, and he goes, "Man, you probably don't care, and you probably don't care about my opinion, but I just want to let you know you were right." When we oh, talk, and I was like, yeah. "Well, that's cool." Like, and I was like, "Man, I appreciate that." Like, that I'm, takes I'm, I'm, some stones. It man. does. Like, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not always trying to be right. I just want, I just want everybody to know the facts of of what it is. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, um, having an open dialogue where uh you both leave is i mean i've seen this politics thing like separate families and i'm just like hold yeah. hold the phone so people you haven't even ever met are separating you from family members who you know and love and have known for 30 years but right. someone who you've never met who in your mind has way more power than they actually do yeah because we have we do have three branches of government yeah um and it's are, it's and, it's crazy and they are supposed to be elected by the people well, they are yeah <laughs> not uh, by machines yes uh <laughs> yeah and we'll just leave it there so this video can stay up on youtube uh be but yes they are supposed to be elected by the people no it's crazy man having an open dialogue yeah. that uh, to me uh shows that someone's intelligent right you have an open mind you have a different viewpoint than me we're not going to get in a fist fight about it yeah. we're not going to cuss each other out about it. we're going to go Oh, that's a fair point, brother. I'm gonna think about that. I yeah. don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, cheers. Yeah, you know, a lot for me. A lot of it is, is where I sit, like with my my principles, my my moral stance, my my faith stance, and I think that leads me a lot into my decision in in life, like or, or who I will back, in whatever it may be. Um, because if I don't align with that, then it's like, how am I gonna support that? Sure. Um, so I think so sometimes. 
I see it a lot now. A lot of people are so angry at, at a person that they don't look at really what the the principles and policy may be of that. And I think people are that's where that's where the hate thing comes in too much. And I hate seeing it. Like you can hate hate. It's okay to hate hate, but to hate like a person because of some things or what you're told, like. I'll meet. That's one of the things. Like I'll meet anybody for the first time, and I may hear stories about him. Like, oh, that guy's a real asshole, or he's a jerk, whatever. But if you treat me really good, dude, I'm gonna treat you good. Yeah. Like, and and I give everybody a clean slate until proven otherwise. Sure. And I think people don't even know people, and they're assuming like they're the biggest jerk in the world, and just based off what somebody else told them or what they saw on TV. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, when did the faith thing? Uh debut in your life has that been something that you've had all, all the I way kind of grew up in a, in, a, in a catholic uh family and stuff and then um i never really felt a lot of substance from that and then it was kind of when i was at a low spot in my life um that i really realized like i couldn't get through life really without a foundation of of faith in god in my life and when i was uh, it was really right before i met my wife um that we that I really had like a healing in my heart. And, and I, the only way I could say that happened was, was through God. And then really amazing things happened in my life after that. Mm. Um, I, my wife came into my life, um, you know, and then just ama- the amount of blessings we've had. And really the only way I could say, like, it wasn't lucky that I met her or wasn't anything. It was literally by God. And and when you could say that, when you can't explain things or it's unexplainable, like, you just say, man, that's that's thank you God for that because that's that's amazing, you know. Absolutely. Um, so that that's been a foundation of of our relationship. I think a big part of why relationships fail nowadays is they're either equally unyoked from just their faith, or, or it's a lot of other things now, politics and all that too. But yeah. I think faith plays a big, you know, if you have faith of the of equal faith together, it doesn't have to be exactly equal, but you know, have they're both believers. You both have, you know, you, you go to church, you do things together, um, you learn really what love is and what God you know talks about love um, and how to treat each other and and just some basic disciplines on life. I mean, you don't have to be a Bible thumping Christian to go around and just be a a, a, per, a respectable good person that understands like the most simplest thing that Jesus ever told us is treat others like you want to be treated. You understand that. I mean, that's, that's a great thing, you know? So, um, just some basic concepts there. Like I've had friends that, that I've helped, you know, find, find God and get into, you know, strengthening their faith. And, you know, they were even a little bit hesitant or afraid because they think like, well, they got to be this perfect person. And I'm like, that's not what it's about. Like if everybody's perfect, there wouldn't be a church and there would be nothing wrong in life. So everybody's got faults. Everybody's got issues. So it's being accepting. It's being willing to give grace. Being willing to, um, you know, we've all we all have been given grace from from God, and and I give people grace for mistakes and things happen. So the uh, the dark times, um, pulling yourself out of those. Um, I've been in some myself. Some brought on by injuries. Does that is that played a part in that type of dark? Getting through some of those dark times were the were the onset of those dark times. Sometimes uh, injuries, ab- absolutely, and, and and choices in life and in previous relationships and that kind of stuff. And um, you know, and and even being a firefighter medic, there was times you know I, I I you know I said my heart was healed as one of the things. Um, the being in that that uh, profession, whether it's police. EMS, um, nurses a lot, you know, you're seeing a lot of humanity at its lowest level. You know, you're seeing people stab each other, kill each other. Um, you're seeing that kind of stuff. You're seeing like death of, of a really old person to like a, a one month old kid that you're trying to save. And that affects you over time. You know, there's that, there's that PTSD that just builds up over time. Um, and, and I get it, you know, when I could relate to somebody that's been an overseas or a veteran that's had to deal with that, like I totally get it. Cause in ways, you know, those, the guys that were working here every day, you know, um, in a police car or in an ambulance or something are dealing with the shit every day. And, um, it does affect you. It hardens your heart. It, you know, you're seeing the, you kind of get angry at humanity a little bit. So it took some, some, um, and, and, and it's still, there's times my wife calls me on it where I'm not caring enough about certain little things like you know she may not she may have a headache about something and i blow it off because i'm like ah, you'll be fine like you know but you know instead of being a little more compassionate i need that's maybe one thing i need to work on compassion um you know I, doing that or, or having a, a more 
being observant of my faults and, and knowing it and owning it has definitely helped me in, in relationship too. Yeah. What's your biggest fear in life? I really don't have a fear. Yeah. You know, like mine's failing, but it's like not trying and failing. I yeah. think it's my bigger fear. Like I get that. that that's I'm more of a be... dream. It feels like, you know, like yeah. kind of you're running and you just can't run fast yeah. enough kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's, it's, um, this year maybe, you know, put, put a little bit of fear. It, it tried to sneak in a little bit because of like, you know, with, with shutdowns, things being canceled, like, okay, like. What if bodybuilding's not there? What if we can't compete anymore? What if there's like then it, then that started kind of snowballing into more thoughts to where I was like, you know, just again that's where faith comes in too. Like, you know, okay, I believe in I with my faith I'm going to get through this. And and that's really helped me through some again, dark times don't necessarily mean that you got a gun to your head ready to kill yourself. You know, dark times meaning you're going through a struggle or it's you know, it's a mental struggle, it's a physical struggle, it's it's a relationship struggle. Um and I think if if faith is probably one of the contributors, where I say it's it's helped me. But the the more of being able to provide for my my wife and family is probably the only thing I would fear, like not being able to. Yeah. That's probably it. But you know, whether it's walking down a dark alley or doing something that I, I wouldn't want to do, maybe not jump off an airplane. Maybe I wouldn't want to do that. You haven't skydived? No, I, I probably break the shoe. I think they have a weight limit they on this. They do, stuff. but yeah. I mean, we're probably fairly close, and you can go down to. Uh... Down to the one that's in Hillsboro, and they'll okay. take you if you're uh, – because the weight limit up here in Whitesboro, I'm like, I don't know anyone that's that weight oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a dude. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? That's the weight limit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And at that time, I was like, have fun to my girlfriend. Yeah. We drove all the way out here, and, oh, you should try it. It's crazy. Yeah, maybe maybe swimming with sharks or yeah. – try not to do, do any st- – That's to me, that's just kind of like you, you're asking for it kind of thing. So. Swimming with sharks is definitely <laughs> asking for it. What's on your What's on your business bucket list? What do you want to What do you want to try or achieve or endeavor? So, I I'll start with I guess bodybuilding world wise because that is a business of mine. Yep. Um, it would be to win one of the big shows like the Mr. Olympia or the Arnold. I Top think dog. I'm, you know to to win one of those, which I'm I'm really knocking on the door. Um, Come on, bro. is is Let's definitely one of like the the bucket list things. Yeah. Um, I think business wise, it's it, I can't say like you know I want to take a company and flip it to you know a billion dollar company in ten years kind of thing. I think it's just being successful and doing something I enjoy, and um, you know it's it, it's even been I I'm kind of one of those guys I know whatever I apply myself to it, it will be successful because you know how to work hard and work through things and 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 put the right people in the, in the right places. So it's been even thought about maybe opening my own gym, chain of gyms, different things like that. But then there's that there's that cross where it's like, do you want to something you really enjoy doing? Do you want to like burden some of that? So I, actually, a real close friend of mine, Will Dugas, one of the, one of the most I'm gonna say he's probably one of the baddest ass car race guys I know. Like yeah, he's 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 amazing. Um, has some of the fastest street cars in the world. Sweet. So he, uh, he you know, people always ask, him, why don't you open your own shop? You know, you got. 10 different race cars that you have and you in and he's like man I never wanted to like do business as something I really loved and enjoyed to do as like my hobby. Yeah. A lot like, of artists say that and I was like, too. Man, that's that's really good to look at that too because yeah. you know then you're going to start like oh man I got to work on this guy's car I got to do this sure. you know and and then but same kind of thing about being in the gym. Like I love going to a gym and not worry about the things I'm sure the operations of a gym like somebody's bitching about the shower not working and, and coming up to you about their membership and all that kind of stuff. Like, man, I'm just here to work out, yeah. you know? So yeah, there's, there's that, do I do it because of that? And yeah, you can make money at it, but again, you have to think of things that are, is it worth it? Sure. Most definitely. Um, it, when did the, uh, when over the last 18 years that you've been, you've been doing this bodybuilding thing has nutrition made its biggest strides when in there? For me, or just in general? I think just in general. I I think it's it's, it's been a I think it's been an evolution like since like the the times of like Arnold and like the seventies and then you go into the eighties and I think you really saw a transition into what supplementation and nutrition could do like when that Dorian Yates hit the stage you know mm-hmm. in like the the mid nineties um, he kind of made uh, brought like that freak factor to the sport where. This guy shows up just gnarly condition, biggest we've ever seen anybody on stage. And a lot of that was contributed to, I think, uh, the nutrition side. 
and I think it's just gotten better and better and better. And you can see that through the progression of the guys on stage. Guys have gotten bigger. Guys have gotten harder. Um, and all that is – when I say harder, it's like condition how lean they get. Yeah. And and I think that the biggest contributor to that is, is nutrition. And you can only – eventually you're going to hit a point where you can only do so much nutritionally. I think, you know, people are able to take more – learn more about nutrition like from the like food insensitivities um you know the the convenience of food now like with say i use like a company icon meals in dallas you know they do pre-made healthy food yeah. like you can get it to like, we're not have to go to the store cook it and so it cuts a lot of time out of like preparation of that so i mean that's even one of the aspects of nutrition that's improved over the years um so today obviously it's at its best because of the amount of quality of foods probably increased in somewhat and there's things that probably decreased too but um you know having more grass-fed stuff available you know organic stuff yes certain organic stuff is probably better than than non-organic or heavily processed stuff maybe maybe but i think in general um nutrition's definitely come a long way for me it's it's a learning process it's not so much of like hey um, you know, is this food okay? But it's like, you know, does this food work with me and how does it respond in my body? Um, so that's really the progression that's made in, in my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest misnomers, like just broad sweeping generalizations that just the public who don't really know anything about the bodybuilding space, what are, what are some of those misnomers? I think, it, you know, um, one of the things is probably people just think, oh, those guys just take a bunch of drugs and that's what they, that's how they get big. You know, like it's kind of a common comment I get back to me if I post something on like a yeah. more of a public page. Like, oh, he, steroids are getting in your head or your testosterone is so high, you, you're dumb or, you know, and I'm like, that's, that's like a fifth grade comment, dude. Like, yeah. that all you got to say to, a, you know, and I don't even go get into it. I just kind of laugh at it. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, it's, it's people just think like, oh, they just take a bunch of drugs and they get huge. Like, that's not, that's not it at all. You know, I think, like I said, it's, it's, there's the, the genetics part to it. There's the training, there's nutrition. Those are your biggest factors in, in, in what it is. Um, so that's one, I think, um, you just, I guess the other one would be like how much you bench, bro. Like people think it's like, for me, it's what I do. It's not a, how often do people say, ah, oh, do you work out? I think I might have said that to you the first time I met you. I always, my common douchey, my common I'm comeback sorry. to that is um, it's Barely. my it's my New Year's resolution this uh -huh. year. So, <laughs> 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 but I think people think um, you know like that we're a power lifters or, or or like I'm a wrestler or something you know. And I just said no, no. I I do the stuff like Arnold did where it's in the magazines that it looks good. It's not yeah. always about like how much I lift. Sure. So. Um, that, and that's something, uh, if you were a power lifter, your body would look different, right? Because to yeah. get, to get the, to those strength plateaus, mm -hmm. it just takes a little bit of a different body yeah. composition, unless you're Marius Pujanowski or something, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. There's I mean, that dude was just genetic freak, but also super strong. Um, I'm a stronger bodybuilder, but I don't train for strength. There's definitely different ways to train. You know, I train more for hypertrophy, which is, you know, growth of muscle. And a lot of that's done through reps and technique and, and the, the style of training. Um, so that's that's one of the things that separates like a power lifter versus, you know, power lifter may do one or two reps and then rest for five or 10 minutes to go do another one rep. Sure. You know, in that 10 minutes, I've already done, you know, five to 10 sets of stuff and, and have just cranked it through a body part. Um, so it's totally different training. Is that rapid succession set to set to set part of your cardiovascular training as well? It definitely helps. It's an, I don't consider that like cardio per se, okay. but it's, you know, like your heart rates up, you're, you're sweating your butt off, you're breathing hard. Like there's a good, you know, it is anaerobic training, but at the same time it is helping, you know, your heart and, and your overall health. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, to, to some people who might watch this, um, who have never trained with weights and they think, Oh, if I pick up a weight, I'm going to be, I'm just going to bulk up be as big as I am. Yeah. You're going to get as big as Steve <laughs> or maybe even as big as Jess. I mean, that's, that's right. going to take you guys a while. Um, but keep trying what, I mean, that's not true. And, and, uh, right. strength training, resistance training is really, really good for your body, for yeah. your bones. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think women look at that probably as the most taboo. Yes. Because women are like, oh, I don't want to look, I don't want to get big. Like, you're it's not going to pick years. up weight and just get big, yeah. you know. And like you said, it's very good for you. It's healthy. It, it helps your bone structure. It helps, you know, the more muscle you have, the more fat you're going to burn. Like I always said, like look at like runners versus sprinters. 
you know. Um, sprinters are kind of jacked. They, they're they more anabolic versus like, oh, I'm just going to do cardio all day. And then you look kind of skinny and soft like a runner versus yeah. I'd rather look like a sprinter, you know, because one, they're athletic looking. They look, you know, they're lean, they're, they're muscular. Yeah. And that's just the style they're training. Hey, we all want to look like Usain Bolt, right? That dude looks <laughs> like a Greek god or something. All those guys, man. They're Winning amazing. by like 10 strides. Oh, my gosh, yeah. He's crazy. Do you think that advancements in nutrition and technology um, have uh, – have extended the the uh, competition oh, ages of uh, professional yeah. bodybuilders. I mean, Dexter Jackson is fifty one years old, competing in Miss Olympia this really? year. Really, and Hot um, dang. that's wow. amazing. Usually, guys' career like peak in about thirty five to forty is like the peak of a bodybuilder's career. Um, so I'm kind of like in the hitting my peak like right now until I can go probably another five years if I want. Um, but then after 40, just age is going to, you know, get the best of you. And and it just doesn't look the same. Like, it's just the way the body progresses. So to see a guy that's 51 competing with the best in the world and, and be a top 10, top 5 guy is incredible. And and I think a lot of that is to the training uh, knowledge he has and, and how what it takes for his body and his genetics. Like, not everybody can do that. But I think, you know, he's got all the pieces that makes it work. Yeah. What are some things that just normal everyday people who might hit the gym three, four times a week, do some cardio, they're active on the weekends, can do nutritionally or with hydration just to start to make a change? Especially as we this by the time this drops, it'll be about twenty twenty one or might or might mm -hmm. be twenty twenty one. What are some things that can do? Drink more water, maybe what put MCT oil in your coffee? What are just you know, some there's, practical things? I think there's a lot of there's there's a lot of good information, a lot of bad information out there, and I think people always look for like that easy thing or what's like yeah. the niche or, or cool thing to do. And you saw that for a while, like keto. Yeah. I'm gonna do keto, but is it something you sustain for a long period of time? Is it like something that you can make a lifestyle? And it really is not. You may lose 20 pounds in a month or two, but you know, can you keep it off? Can you, you know, if you want to go eat some carbs, are you gonna blow up from your so carb sensitive then? Yeah. So there's a lot of things like you have to think of longevity on that. Um, and and I think some programs that have come out in the in the in this last year I've noticed like say like seventy five hard by Andy Frisella. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people doing that, and a lot of it is a really good thing because it learns it, you're getting discipline, you're getting your basic workout in. It's like get a gallon of water in a day, you know, work out twice for at least forty five minutes. Be outside for one of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's some basic things like if you just add that into your repertoire that you do on a daily basis, you're gonna better yourself. And the, the the more fit you are, and I'm not talking about being like be on stage as a bodybuilder, but the better your fitness is, the better you're gonna perform in life, the better your relationships are gonna be, the better your sex is gonna be, the better you you know, you're gonna feel better at your job and just living life. You're gonna sell better. Yeah, yeah. I mean better. it's gonna just come through on your skin, it's gonna come through on your your voice and on you know, and who you are and your confidence. Like it really is. So um our, our pastor says we're spirit, soul, and body, and we take care of our bodies, yeah. you know, and, and um, I think doing some basic things, like I said, you know, a lot of people, as simple as it sounds, like hydration, getting a certain amount of water in a day. A lot of people don't drink enough water, yeah. and it's not about drinking, you know, five gallons of water a day, but it may be a gallon. Set yourself a, a you know, and just try drinking that for a few days and see. You'll notice, like, man, I really don't drink a lot of water, but... Water is one of the, the best things you can do to hydrate your, your – we need it as our, our bodies. Um, you know, eating good foods, you know, less processed foods. Think of more natural foods, more colorful foods, uh, you know, grains. And a lot of people, like, think, oh, fruits are bad because they're sugar. You know, that's, like, just a, a misconception a lot of people have. And fruits are one of the most nutrient-dense foods there are. And don't be afraid of them. They're what good. about nuts? N nuts – I mean, if you don't have any sensitivity to stuff, you know, like you know, peanut allergies, whatever – um, are very, very good. Healthy fats, you know, like you talked about MCT oil, um, you know, olive oils, there's like uh, avocado oils, avocado itself that you can, that are great foods to eat. And it's, and um, I think a lot of people are afraid to eat sometimes. They're like, oh, if I'm going to diet or lose weight, I got to just starve myself. Right. And that's not good because that, that's only going to work for a few weeks. And eventually your body has this mechanism where it saves itself and it goes into like this starvation mode where all of a sudden the metabolism slows down. You won't be making any progress, and you're just gonna be like soft, skinny, and and 
probably you know really hungry at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so you you really you'd be surprised if you feed your body, treat it like a furnace, like sure. eat some smaller meals throughout the day. You know, if you only eat once or twice a day right now, try to bump to like three or four, and then from there you're you're going to start getting more hungry. Okay. And and you're 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 training your body to kind of become your metabolism to speed up a little bit. And then you'll be eating five to six times a day before you know it. You, uh, have you ever experimented with intermittent fasting? No. and um, Just because I mean, you're a performance athlete. Exactly. You have fuel to perform. I mean, it doesn't... That works. Um, I, I think it gives people a reason not to eat, <laughs> you know, that yeah. eat all the time or eat... Sure. You know, and you limit the amount of time somebody could eat, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to help them not eat as as much but um i think we fast enough during the night from when we go to bed to when we get up in the morning that's you know and then that's why it's called break fast because you've you been fasting all day or all night so ideally unless you're up a couple times a night you might hit the fridge here yeah. or there or, yeah and if, you know i may throw a protein shake in at night if i'm if i'm yeah. like man my stomach's rumbling or something right. but um yeah um can you break down quickly for an idiot like myself how to eat and measure it through a macro system. Yeah, there's that's not easy to just no, Google and and, 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 learn. And, and you know it's you can't really say that one thing works for everybody either. So everybody does have a little bit, you know, special circumstance like what their body likes. And it's going to be really a learning process of what you like. Are you more of a meat eater? Does your body process protein better than it does like carbohydrates? Is it a protein fat? Is it a protein carb? So uh, some of it is wor- what is your exercise like goals or what is your fitness like lifestyle? If you're very active, if you train hard and you're performance based, like you're going to need the fuel to 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 fuel that workout. Um, and and I think sometimes people look at uh, protein as like oh I, again like I'm going to get big if I eat too much protein. Yeah. Like not really the case. Um, you don't need like the massive massive amounts that some people think. Like you don't need two grams per pound of body weight that's that's unrealistic for most people like for me that'd be like trying to eat 600 grams of protein yeah. a day and, and my digestion would just be terrible you know and <laughs> so that like that's a problem Could you even do that i guess if you drink enough muscle egg and <laughs> that stuff, and and that's a whole lot of chicken and steak oh. i mean that'd be it'd be rough like yeah. so that's where you got to balance it out with you know proteins and fats and and carbohydrates and um I like a good balance there. So if I was to put like a number on it, so I usually probably do about like 20% fat into my diet. I probably do about 30% of that is uh, protein and then probably 50% carbs. So I do a little bit higher carb because I do a lot more activity. Like more on my training days, well, my carbs will definitely be higher. If not, then I won't eat as many carbs. I may do more fats or protein with it. Um, and, and, you know, Think of things like simplify things in life. Sometimes people try to overthink it. Like, and that's where using companies like Icon Meals is great because they have food that's re- they really have it all measured out, weighed, cooked, everything for you. You just warm it up, yeah. you know. And it's whether it's four ounces of chicken and and a cup of rice and some vegetables. Like it's sure. very easy. There's no there's really no excuse now that you can't do it. Gotcha. You know, um, talk about the importance of a pre workout and a post workout. Uh, from the from the uh, supplement angle, I mean you're sure. depleting your body. You, yeah. I mean, uh, but even if you're just hitting the gym for 45 minutes, you're depleting your body. What do you need to put it back in right when you're done working out? And then how far after? How many minutes or hours after you work out do right. you need to be putting calories in yourself? For me, I, I, you know, if you're eating throughout the day, I always like to eat probably an hour, hour and a half before I train, and that way I got some substance in me, you know, you got good nutrition in you, you got some protein, some carbohydrates in you. Um, that's kind of feeding your bloodstream as, as you're getting ready to go train. I'll take a pre-workout. Um, I work with a company we've been with all max for the last five years. So they got some really good products that, um, I'm not a big stim guy, so I'm not like, you know, hammering, you know, uh, bangs or, or high stim products before I work out. Because I, I, I just, one, if I get done training, like, and if it's late at night, I want to just go home and go to bed, you know, not worry about it. But, um, so I, I use, like, the, the Stim Free stuff a lot, and they have a product, like, uh, it's just strictly pump. So it's going to be something that helps dilate your veins, put more blood in the muscle, more nutrients can go there, and, and that's um, ultimately how the, it, it works. So that's pretty much pre-post-workout. I like to do, like, a, right after I'm done training, I'll do, like, a protein shake. 
and I'll do it also with some carbohydrates, whether it's like with a uh, carb powder that like Omax has a, a carb powder that I mix in with the proteins on flavor taste, you know, it makes it all you taste the protein flavor. Um, so you're going to replenish your glycogen after your training and you're going to get the amino acids, the protein to start repairing and recovering, you know, the damage you've induced in your muscles. Um, and then probably an hour, hour and a half after that, I'll actually eat a solid meal then too. So it is a, it is a process of feeding the machine and, and continuing nutrition throughout the day. Are you taking uh, any creatine in your post-workout or are you getting most of your creatine through your nutrition? Probably most of your nutrition right now, but there's times where I'm more motivated, like usually pre-contest where I'll, I'll include more creatine, you know, cause it does help, um, you know, my training aspects. Like I'll take it before and after uh, I train. So, um, with regard to pain management and, uh, injury recovery, um, I know you're into stem cell treatments, um, and you've done some locally. Yeah. You've talked about that a little bit. Have you considered going to South America to try some of the, some of the lo- stuff that's not quite legal here? That's, that's I've seen some of the stuff they do in South America. Um, I, if you find the right doctors, a lot of it might be available here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I go to Addison Payne with uh, Johnny East, an and, and amazing doctor and one of the guys I trust. You know, there's people I always say, there's people that know how to do something, or that do it, and there's people that know how to do it. And Johnny's one of the people that know how to do it. And he's one of the doctors that every procedure he's done, he's done himself, too. So um, so I recently had my shoulders, my knees, my lower back, and my uh, bicep tendons all injected with stem cells. Um, one for more longevity and prevention. And then uh, two, I did have a little shoulder injury that I was just kind of dealing with some pain. So just wanting to kind of get rid of that nagging stuff and just hopefully prolong my career and my training. It was not really every day I'm beating the crap out of my body right. and it does, you know, it's wear and tear. So if I could help fertilize that grass and make it a little bit thicker, then, then I'm going to utilize the technology and the advancements in medicine I have available to me now. Absolutely. Is that shoulder your only injury or have you s- sustained other? It was actually an old sports injury when yeah. I played hockey. I, I was, collision was sports. you know, full speed. I hit the boards and it, it actually like fractured a, a, my AC joint yeah. in there. And uh, it's kind of nagged over the years, and then I, I've um, had some PRP in it, and it helped. And then he's like, if we do the stem cell, it'll really be like one level up above that. So, you know, I, I do a lot of preventative things, too. I think, again, I come back to the, the car analogy where if you take care of your car, it's going to work better over a long period of time. So I do, you know, whether it's chiropractic work, utilizing like the, the PRP stuff, Proper nutrition, um, all that really plays roles in keeping your body at you know being optimal. Absolutely. Have you tried hyperbaric? Uh, I've done ozone therapy, yeah. which is not not far off that. And it's um, I've recently done it, and I've actually really like it. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to incorporate more of that. Yeah. For sure. After uh, if you're really uh, in a build stage and getting ready for a competition, are you uh, going home and icing down or any of that type of stuff to help with joint pain not, management? Not too much. You, I'm, pr- you know, I train. I always like to train very like biomechanically smart and not just kind of throw weights around. And that's kind of like the old Ronnie Coleman days. Like that, he threw weights around a lot, and and you can see he's paying for it now because it wasn't time. always the best form on yeah. stuff. So I, I always think of like how am I going to lift this right and not try to injure myself. Um, if I do have injuries, you know, one of the things I like to do is get in, like, hot tub or hot, let that kind of inflammation and blood flow um, help repair. And then if something's really painful, you know, ice helps. Is it bro science that, hey, I got a bad knee, I can't do squats? I mean, no, can it's, you strengthen it, that? You can. I think if 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 you have something, there's obviously, like, a, an injury you can't, like, if you tear something, okay, that's that's a physiological uh, issue that you, that, can't be just corrected with changing your form or avoiding the injury. Like, you but if to, you have it repaired, yeah. should you be able? Well, to I think properly you, a lot of it, like, if you do a movement right, it shouldn't really hurt. Like, you got to find that's where like a good trainer comes in or somebody that's knowledgeable. Um, you know, and I see people squatting all the time or, or doing exercise, and it's so wrong. And I'm like, God, they're gonna they're gonna pay for it. And I, I even find myself doing stuff wrong sometimes. Where I start, if my knees start hurting because the way I'm squatting, I know I'm not doing it right. And I know it's because either my hips are tight and, and I'm not getting enough flexibility through that to actually do the do the movement properly to actually work the, the areas I need to work. My knee's taking the, the load and it's not my quad and, and hip like it should be. So it's it's learning, you know, your body and doing it like stretching, go, like I said, chiropractic, massage, all that stuff really helps prevent a lot of those injuries that you can get. How did you find your current coach? 
the guy who you said pulls back on the reins when you're charging too hard. Funny enough, it's actually a, a female coach yeah. I have. Yeah, but, but she's a uh, retired female bodybuilder. So yeah. she had a very she had a good career herself and um, uh, Gina Davis is her name and, and she ended up taking some guys that I saw on a local level that were okay bodybuilders and made them look really good. So to me, if you could take a piece of coal and turn it into a diamond, I'm like, you know what you're doing and I could trust you. Sure. But there's a lot of coaches that take like these top athletes that are always amazing genetics that are they're incredible. Like my mom could coach and turn them into a, a Mr. Olympia. Like it's not a hard thing. So uh, that carried a lot of weight with me and, and also like the intelligence behind it as well. Like being a paramedic and knowing how the body works and just learning my body for years and years. I understand you know, a lot of physiological and biological things of the body and, and why it does certain things and like whether it's about water levels or, or mineral levels or you know digestion, all that kind of stuff and what to do to correct it. And and when we talked on the same wavelength, you know, and and, and I she understood and I understood like there was that okay, I could put my trust in you and, and there's that trust factor. The um the importance of adaptability, being able to adapt in life or as an athlete. Um, you started this when you were young, you're 35 now, how has being adaptable, uh, mm. played to your advantage? I, it's not even so much, I think adaptable as it is to being willing to learn, mm. you know, and being so willing, being coachable. To, being coachable, you know, and, and not knowing at all. Like, um, there's some guys that I, I actually are in town, um, in Dallas this week and they're, they're, they're biomechanic coaches. And literally, like, I'm willing to, to hang everything I know on the door when I walk in and say, teach me something I don't know or teach me, show me this movement. I want to see if I'm doing it right. And a lot of that is just being, willing, again, willing to learn and being humble with it and saying, you know, I don't know everything. And I, if I'm doing it wrong, I want to learn the right way to do it. Sure. Um, I know you said you're kind of a blow and go guy, bull in a china shop. Like, yeah, and we, I think yeah. we're the same in that regard. Um, when you when you consider and you think about adversity, yeah. is adversity just hey, it doesn't even exist? Or do you, if you see a, a rock rolling down the hill at you, you get yourself ready, brace for it, and then try to break that rock? How do you encounter it and embrace it if you do? I think uh, adversity absolutely exists. You know, I, I, I think some of adversity is through haters or people that, that want to see you fail. or, or Those damn haters, man. You know, they do exist. Yeah, and, sure. and um, you know, it, it's not not putting energy into that and not focusing on that. Because if you do, that rock's going to get really big and it's going gonna, it's gonna to run your ass over. Like yeah. you said, if it's coming downhill right. and you start building that rock up and it's, you know, it, but it's in your head. Um, so for me, it's, it's focusing on what I have to do. Uh, not even like getting ready for competitions. Not I don't focus on my competition because I don't have control of that. Right. I have control of what I can do, and and the effort and the the time, and the focus I put into it is is on me. It's not nobody else, and that's one of the unique things about bodybuilding is is you learn to really. Nobody's gonna lift the weight for you. Nobody's gonna put the fork and feed mm. you. Yeah. Um. Nobody. It's on you at the end of the day. So the adversity would be from the haters and then trying to focus on the wrong things, focus on what you have to do. Is it difficult for you? Um, the bodybuilding thing is so it's up to you yeah. um, to then switch over to business where you got to have a team and the team's got to work together as a unit. Is that a, is that a, a weird transition for you? Yeah. Or do you have kind of a team a little bit there with you? Cause you got your trainer, maybe your nutritionist. So there is some teamwork yeah. in what you do, but still it all come. You can't delegate leg day. <laughs> exactly. I, in business, I've had a harder time delegating. I think because of that, yeah. like I'm just going to do it and I know how to do it and I'll get it done. But you know, um, we're learning from like the, um, uh, apex guys I've, I work with at like my buddy, Ryan Stuman, I was telling you about, you know, you got buckets in life. Like you have like your, your $10 bucket, your hundred dollar bucket, your thousand dollar bucket. And, and when I was taught that, I was like, man, it's true. Like you're doing the $10 an hour job that you can pay somebody to do. And you could be focusing on like the hundred dollar an hour and thousand dollar an hour jobs that need to be done. So, um, that's helped me think, you know, get through that, that again, it's, it's a learning curve in business, um, that to delegate some work, yeah. but, um, I think that is one of the carryovers that you, again, you only learn from that mistake. Yeah. Have you read the E-Myth ever, that mm -hmm. book? Yeah. I mean, it talks a lot about that, right? So, uh, for me, delegating was very difficult. I used to run my entire company. My, I did everything. Yeah. And then I had guys in the field doing all the manual labor, but I did everything else. So the last two years of my life has been learning to delegate 
and then follow back up and not take your head off if it wasn't done right because yeah. maybe 85 or 90 percent is gonna just get the job done and we'll be all right with right. that right because you it mean you're gonna you're gonna be limited to how much you can grow your business if you're the one that's trying to do everything yeah because you're not focused on growing a business you're focused on working for the business jerry jones listen to this brother <laughs> listen brother <laughs> hire troy as your gm that would be amazing if uh if if uh somebody watching this podcast wants to reach out to you how can they how can they connect with you uh, through social medias just at steve kuklo k-u-c-l-o um so I'm on really Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, all of them. Um, and then uh, just Steve at stevekuklo.com. Pretty simple uh, is my email. Awesome, man. So Hey, I appreciate you coming man, on. Thank you, guys. Thanks this this has been great. And uh, be, be honored to come back if you ever want. I <laughs> most definitely will, <laughs> this man. Is great. I appreciate your time. Yeah. This was fun. Thank you, Jess. Absolutely. Well, that was awesome. Super high energy. I know I say that a lot, but Steve, man, he just radiates energy. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'd love to know what you think about the podcast. Drop us a comment below. I love doing them, but I'd love to know what you think about them. Uh, you can also hit me anytime on Instagram at Jess from the Northwest. Or if you want to do some work together, partner up on something, hit me on email live at autographconstruction.com. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>